Okay, hi you guys. Um, so I have a story I want to read you guys today. It's called The Porcelain Man. And it's by Richard Kennedy. Okay. So it begins. Alright. Once upon a time, at the edge of town lived a harsh man with a timid daughter, who had grown pale and dreamy from too much obedience. The man kept the girl busy and hardly ever let her go outdoors. You're lucky to be inside where it's safe and sound, he would say to her. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there. The world is full of bottle snatchers, ragmonders, rat robbers. Believe you me. The girl believed him. Each morning, the man left the house in his rickety wagon pulled by his rackety horse. All day long, he would go up and down the streets of town, into the countryside, into neighboring villages to find what he could find. He would bring home old broken wheels, tables and chairs with the legs gone from them, pots and pans with holes in them, scraps of this and pieces of that. His daughter would then mend and repair the junk during her long and lonely days in the house, and the man would take the things away and sell them as second-hand goods. This is the way they lived. One morning, the man left the house and gave his daughter the usual instruction and warning. If someone passes the road, stay away from the windows. If someone knocks, don't answer. I could tell you terrible stories. Then he left, and the girl began to work on a broken lantern. Now this morning, some good luck happened to the man. As he was passing a rich man's house, a clumsy kitchen maid chased two cats out the front door with a broom and knocked over a large porcelain vase. vase. The vase rolled out the door and down the steps and path and shattered into pieces against a marble pillar near the roadway. The man stopped and watched. The maid closed the door, and the man waited there for ten minutes. No one came out. He then leaped down from his cart and gathered up the broken porcelain. He set the pieces gently in his cart and hurried off towards home. His daughter, as usual, was safe and sound inside. This is fine porcelain, the man said. Drop whatever you're doing and patch it up. We'll get a good price for it. It was early in the day yet, so the man left again to see what else he might find. He remembered to pause at the door and say, stay inside. Terrible things are going on out there. Dog eat dog. Devil take the hindmost and sore folk. And Sort and so forth. Then he left. The girl turned a piece of porcelain in her fingers, admiring its beauty. She carefully laid the pieces on a blanket and got out the glue. Then, humming to herself and musing on fanciful thoughts in the way she had acquired from being so much alone, she began to put the pieces of porcelain together. She worked quickly and neatly, even though her thoughts were completely elsewhere. Where did I go? Okay. Then humming to herself and musing on fanciful thoughts in the way she had acquired from being so much alone, she began to put the pieces of porcelain together. She worked quickly and neatly, even though her thoughts were completely elsewhere. And at the end of a couple hours, she was amazed to see that she had just set the last piece in place on a full-size porcelain man. At that moment, the porcelain man spoke. I love you, he said, taking a step towards the girl. Gracious, gasped the girl, snatching up the blanket and throwing it about the man. Gracious, she gasped again, as the porcelain man encircled her in his arms and kissed her. While this was happening, the girl's father returned to the house, and right at this moment he opened the door to the room. Whoa, he bellowed. He grabbed a chair raised it above his head, and brought it down squarely on top of the head of the porcelain man with a blow that shattered him from head to toe, and the porcelain pieces scattered over the floor. God almighty, the man cried. I fractured his skull. The girl let out a wail, and the man dropped to his knees, stunned with a catastrophe. But the girl explained that it had not been a real man, but only one made of porcelain. A porcelain man who could move? And he could talk as well, said the girl. Fantastic, said the man. Quick. Put him together again before you forget how you did it. I'll make a cage for him and take him to the county fair. I'll charge a dollar to see him. He can learn to dance. I'll make a big sign saying, see the dancing pot, or something like that. I'll make thousands. Quick, put him together again. So the girl collected the pieces on the blanket and slowly began gluing them together again. His, her father sat down and watched her for a while, but he found it to be boring and he dropped off to sleep. The girl worked on, very sad that the porcelain man would be taken away in a cage. 
She was so distressed by her thoughts that she did not notice until putting the last piece in place that she had built a small porcelain horse, and the horse neighed. The man woke up. What's that? He said. That's no man, that's a horse. Now you'll just have to do it all over again, and this time, concentrate. Saying this, the man took up the chair over his head so as to smash the horse. But the horse said to the girl, Quickly, jump on my back. <laughs> she did, and in a second the horse leaped out the window with the girl, and they galloped across the countryside as the man stood waving the chair at them through the window and shouting words they could not hear. After running for several miles, the horse stopped in a small meadow, in the center of which stood a tree. Get down, said the horse. The girl did. Now, said the horse, I'll run into the tree and break myself to pieces, and then you are to put me back together as a man again. Then the horse added, Remember, I love you. And before the girl could say a word, the horse dashed towards the tree and crashed into it at full gallop and broke into hundreds of pieces. The girl cried out, and then she sat down under the tree and wept, for she had no glue. Now on a path nearby came along a young man pushing a wheelbarrow. He stopped when he saw the girl by the tree and went to comfort her. Don't cry, he said. Here, let us gather up the pieces and put them in the wheelbarrow. Come along with me and we'll fix everything almost as good as new. So they loaded up the broken porcelain and they went to the man's cottage and spread the pieces on a blanket. It must have been a beautiful set of dishes, said the man, and he began to glue some pieces together. They talked as they worked and told each other about themselves. The girl admired how well and quickly the young man worked with his hands, and in a short while they had put together a dozen dishes, eight saucers and teacups, six bowls, two large serving platters, a milk pitcher, and two small vases. They cooked supper then. Their eyes met often, and they moved about. Now and again, their hands touched, and they brushed against each other, going to and fro. They set the table with the porcelain ware, and when they were eating, the girl's plate whispered to her, I still love you. Hush, she said. I beg your pardon, the young man said. Oh, nothing, said the girl. And they lived happily ever after. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know what you guys thought of this, but... I mean, on first look, it's just kind of like this kind of like silly, fanciful thing. and Like, oh, porcelain man, and she turns... In, I don't know, all these things. But then, when you kind of look at it again... Uh, like, at first, I liked the girl because I'm like, okay, she like solves her problems creatively by making things. Like, when she was lonely, she makes this porcelain man. And when she needed to like get away from this overbearing, controlling father figure, she makes this horse to like escape. And when she's trying to bond with, or maybe not trying to bond, but whatever, like, um, with this boy that she meets, it's like she's making these dishes, and it's like this thing that they're doing together. But then if you think of, like, the porcelain is, like, this sentient being, and it's kind of like she's, especially in the end, when he's like, or it, or whatever it is, um... I still love you, which it, it, the keyword is still, so it's like, despite, <sighs> I don't know if it's sad or if it's, I don't know what to make of this, but yeah, I still love you, despite that now, instead of a man, it's just like a set of plates that she eats off of, and he watches her bonding with this guy, and so, I don't know, so it's just kind of... And then it kind of clashes with the, and they lived happily ever after. Like, normally that kind of ending is so cliche and whatever, but it's said right after this kind of tragic thing. So I, it's just different. I don't know. I kind of, I mean, it's sad, but I liked it in a weird way or like, I don't know. But yeah, and then, and then the girl tries to like hide it. She's telling the plates to like hush up or whatever, basically. So this other guy doesn't see. And so it's just like. I don't know. I don't know what I make of this girl. Um, but it was a fancy little story. So hopefully you guys liked it. But I don't know. What are your thoughts about these characters and the story? Um, I'll let you reflect on that. Or... Yeah. Okay. Right. Bye, you guys. <laughs>